Last year, there was a seminar that was going on. I told Tom about it. Tom, I want to go to that seminar. I want you to come with me. Oh, I don't know. Here we're starting all over again. Why, 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 why? And I am just so upset. He gets sick. His body is breaking down. In one of his hospital stays, I almost lost him. I went home. In fact, the nurses kicked me out of the hospital. I stayed there with him every night, and they said, it's time for you to go home and get a good night's rest. Said, we'll take care of him. Don't worry. We'll take care of him. We have your phone number. We'll get a hold of you if anything goes wrong. I got home. I dropped to my knees, and the house was quiet. And I said, no, no, Lord, this is not how I want it to be. You're going to make him well. I am not done loving him. I am not done taking care of him. I was so angry at God because he was sick. And he got better. It was one Sunday evening that I got a text message from Betty saying that her husband had been admitted to the hospital. I talked to my wife. We decided that we we're going to go pay Tom a visit. I knew that Tom had been married to Betty for over 20 years, and Betty was praying for many years those years that Tom would one day come to know Jesus. On our way to the hospital, we were just praying that God would just really bless our conversation and that God would somehow steer the conversation so we could talk about the more important things, which is his need of a savior. We ended up having a very nice conversation for about 45 minutes. And then eventually he started talking about his experience at our church. And I had the opportunity to ask him if there was anything that was making it difficult for him to make a decision to join our church. He told me that he'd been thinking about that and that it was time for him to get his life in order and to get in a relationship with God. And he said that he was going to be at the upcoming prophecy seminar, which was going to start six days later. And when the first night gets here to, to go to the seminar, we, I had something else that I wanted to attend that night and she gave in to me and let me do my thing and then the following night we went ahead and came down to the seminar. As usual I'm sitting there watching the whole thing and I'm just totally lost. A couple of girls here that were going to Bible school that came by my house a couple days a week and would help tutor me so that I could learn the Bible a whole lot more. That was one of the best things I had ever had done for me. They come back to church in the evening. They're telling me that Tom knows so little about the Bible and there's no way he's gonna be ready for baptism. So we decided, well, why don't you just continue to meet with Tom and just do your best while you're here to get him acquainted with the Bible, the themes of the Bible. And then they also thought it'd be good to get him um, to memorize the books of the Bible. So we weren't thinking about baptism at all. We just want him to get to know Christ. A few days later on Friday, Betty sends me a text message. And on the text, it says, FYI, Tom went out to get his first Bible yesterday. I could see a major change in his life. I'm awestruck. I never thought that if I had went to Jesus that he would help us with our lives. I was at so, so much at ease. I, f I felt better. Since I've taken God as my savior. The man that I married is not there. He's gone. The man I wish I had married from the day one is here today. And I thank God for, for bringing him to me. There is blessings and miracles in modern day. He is still working to get us to follow that long and narrow road, narrow path. He's working on everybody's soul. He's working to get as many people as he can to be with him in heaven. And I am happy to have my husband there with me. I preached the message last year titled, If Each One Can Reach One.
And I also started this year off with that, with a very similar message, if each one can reach one. I believe that if we're walking with Jesus and we're praying for souls, I believe that it is possible for, for each member to win at least one soul to Christ. And if we could simply do that, we would double the size of our church each year. Take my hand and lead me there Oh, my earthly treasures I will gladly give Teach me how to love and how to share Greed and lust and vanity were mine, Lord Then I found your love divine Yeah,